Hey James at Bimmer World, we're back from the first track weekend in our BMW M4 GT More project. So um, our version of a, a GT4 car built out of a street car for track use if we could do whatever we want. So the first thing we do for a track car is make this thing stop. And this, this car came equipped with carbon ceramic brakes. So, um, you know, pricey option. We bought this car used, so in the aftermarket, not as pricey. And we wanted to have our hands on these, not just in stock trim, and we've, we've driven them in stock trim before, um, but once we start modifying the carbon ceramic setup, how does this work? So we used Pagod RSC pads as our, as our first level of modification. So RSCs, and specifically RSC1, front and rear, and that is Pagod's carbon ceramic pad, made to go with the carbon ceramic discs. So, uh, the death of a carbon ceramic disc, um, and you know, 15 grand for these discs, so you don't want them, you don't want to kill them. Um, the death of these discs is getting the pads out of their temperature range, uh, easy to do at the racetrack, and smearing the disc. So as soon as you smear that disc, 15 grand in the trash, buy new. So how do we how do we still drive this thing fast to be able to stop with confidence? let's put a pad in there that will operate in the temperature range that we want to operate in. So Pagod RSC1 pads all the way around and then it's not it's not just my word for it which you know I can tell you I felt more confident I felt like I was able to modulate the 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 braking in the car and I know they had more torque but we're recording data so we we have Motec same system we're running in the GT4 cars in this car so we can record all the important channels as we do all of our testing on this project. So in data, our primary trace or the most important trace is this wheel speed. Um, and that shows up in braking and at VIR, I'm specifically working on two braking zones. I'm working on turn one and I'm working on two, turn 14. So in that wheel speed trace, we're looking for the rate of the deceleration. How am I, am I braking super hard? Am I gently braking? Um, the steeper that line, the harder I'm braking, the, the more I'm getting out of my brake system. So in, in this example, in turn one, with my red line being my baseline, with the, the stock parts, the black being the RSC1 pads, you can see that I'm going deeper. I'm just, I'm simply able to brake deeper. So, okay, I know what's happening. Um, now, why is that happening? I look at my, my brake input, what I'm doing to the brake pedal. I'm giving the same amount of pressure. When I look at the ABS, it's not giving me what I'm asking for. It's, it's not translating my pedal pressure into, um, into what it's actually applying. So why is that? If I, if I look at the squiggly lines and how, how the ABS is riding it, that's the modulation of the pad. That's the pad's ability to, we would call it release. And you'll see it clearly in this example, if I'm giving it too much brake and the ABS has to dump pressure, it only wants to dump enough to get that wheel spinning again or, or change that dropping wheel speed. But it, it's, the, the pad's too tacky, it's, it's sticking, it's not releasing smoothly in that stock pad situation. So it's having to dump way too much pressure and then when it dumps way too much pressure, then you start getting into suspension. Oh, now we're doing this and now we're diving back on as it has dumped too much and now it's grabbing again. So again, the ability of this RSC pad to just absolutely ride the line is showing up as better braking, steeper braking curve. Even more pronounced in, in turn 14, where the, the inputs, the driver input, are very closely matching what the ABS is doing. So that basically means I am now riding the pedal of the car, all driver, very little ABS intervention. I'm just doing it based on feel. Well, my, I'm able to get much more out of the car. Again, I'm able to brake significantly deeper, black line with the RSC1 pads. And if I look at cumulative time, I gain almost a second in that single braking zone. So not only am I gaining time under braking, as a driver, I feel more confident in my brakes, my ability to stop the car, my ability to maximize the brakes, to ride that threshold, and I'm just faster, happier, and I'm not toasting my carbon ceramic discs, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, carbon ceramic, would love to keep them on the car. Um, super lightweight, they're expensive, but you save 15 pounds a corner, so 60 pounds of rotating unsprung mass. 
Um, I'll spend 15 grand if I have to replace them, but if I don't overheat them, I'm only going to replace them maybe every couple of years versus if I had an iron disc in there, maybe, maybe I'm going through a, a set of iron discs every two, three race events or track events or something like that. So, you know, sticker shock, yes, with the carbon ceramic, but there are benefits and pair them with that RSC1 pad and you've got a pretty potent track combination.